So I'm back, y'all. I know I've been gone for a minute. It's been a good little minute since I've been on here, but I'm back today. So I'm just going to give y'all a little bit of a life update on me, what's kind of been going on with me personally, and to talk about the future of this channel. So y'all buckle up and stay tuned. All right, y'all. So first, I'm just going to talk a little bit about mental and spiritual health. So basically, right after I made that last video, it seemed like everything went left. Spiritually, emotionally, mentally, it seemed like everything just went left. So basically, after I made that video, like the week after, um, that's when everything got real, real crazy with the protests and all that stuff, especially here in Birmingham. The KKK was here for like a day and they came in rallied in protest or they just walked through downtown Birmingham it was crazy so I mean of course experiencing all of that and knowing that all of that is going on right here in my own city you know that's a little bit troublesome and it can you know be real heavy and a lot to take in mentally emotionally and spiritually so um during that week um I was all right I mean it, it was it was really heavy but I kind of bounced back but something I noticed is I kept bouncing back and forth from being okay to not okay to somewhat okay and then like right back to being not okay. So I'm like, all right, something, something got to give. So one thing I've learned to do over the years, especially when it comes to taking care of myself mentally and uh, emotionally and spiritually and all of that, is I just take time to reflect and just try to figure out, especially when I'm kind of bouncing back and forth like that, like one day I'm up, one day I'm down. I just try to figure out what's really going on. Um, and what's in my life that maybe I need to pull back from or get rid of altogether um, just to make sure that I'm okay. So um, one thing, once I start to, started to reflect, is I noticed I was on social media a whole lot. And then um, sometimes if I get like that when I'm really up and down and I just don't want to deal with something or deal with a certain emotion, um, I'll watch a whole lot of TV or I'll pop in a bunch of movies and just try to distract myself. But I'm like, that's not the best way to deal with that. Like, we got to tackle this head on. We got to confront it head on so i was like okay let's just regroup let's take some time to fast and things like that pull away from social media and tv so that's what i did um so i ended up fasting and praying for five days once i got through the five days of the fasting and praying i actually felt pretty good so i was feeling rejuvenated and things like that i really got a lot of the clarity that i needed on um just things for myself and um decisions that I need to make for this year leading into next year so got a lot of clarity a lot of confirmation I was really excited about that but of course the devil wasn't too happy about that he knew I was back feeling up feeling good and feeling focused and I didn't take enough time after that fast to really make sure that I had everything I needed in place to stay focused I just knew that I felt a lot better but um, just looking back on that, I need to make sure I actually maybe take another day after the fast is over to get some things in line and make sure I'm focused once um, the fast is complete. So right after that, y'all, I kid y'all not, like three days later, I got sick. Thank you, Jesus. It was not Corona. Hallelujah. But anyways, I got sick like three days after that. And I was down for about a week. Um, and then after feeling good again and getting over that sickness and having a lot of energy, exercising, doing all the normal things that I typically do in a week. Um, right after that, I got hit again with a spiritual attack. So this time it was more so mental. So um, I fell into a depression, like a really bad depression and having a lot of anxiety. Um, and it lasted off and on at first. It was probably for about a week and then maybe a few weeks, went, like maybe one or two weeks went by. And then after that, it lasted for two weeks straight. I was just really depressed and anxious all at the same time. It was crazy. So needless to say, the devil was not too happy about me fasting and praying because I was not only praying for myself and about my own clarity and decisions that I need to make. I was praying for other people too. Like I was really going in for those five days and really seeking God real, real hard. So the devil was upset hit me with a spiritual attack and I was out for a minute and I'm really just now kind of getting back to myself. But during that two week period, it was really, really hard to even try to pray or even seek God, even though I had just came out of that fast, not too long before then. Like, you know, what's, what's going on? I'm, I'm trying to feel better. I'm trying to stay upbeat and things like that. So it took everything that I could on most days to just 
praise, even something simple, just to thank you, God, here, I love you, God, here, things like that. It took a whole lot to really even muster that strength up to do that. Then it was one particular day, I was sitting here watching a sermon um, from Pastor Michael Todd, but they had a guest preacher that day, and um, it's from his series, Relationship Goals, that he's doing right now. Um, so I was watching that particular sermon, and I was actually feeling pretty good that day. So I was I was doing pretty good. I sat there and watched that sermon. And then there was one point that the preacher hit that it kind of hit me, and I didn't realize it because, like I said, I was feeling good that day. I thought I was okay. And so I didn't even realize I needed to cry. So I just had to cry it out. And once I cried it out, I was just starting to feel, starting to feel a little bit better um, towards the end of the night. And so I think me crying it out and actually having that moment um, it was kind of the starting point to me breaking through this spiritual attack that I was going through. One thing I'm so particularly thankful to God for is that he understands our tears. We don't even have to necessarily pray during those moments. He understands everything about us. So with me just sitting there crying and not knowing and trying to figure out what words to say, because I, I did try to sit there and pray because I'm like, I'm just sitting there crying and getting it all out and everything. But I just sat there and cried it out, like I said. Um, but there's one song in particular that's really gotten me through, and I just really got to plug James Fortune right here because his new album called Dream Again, there's one song on there that is probably my favorite song on that album, and it's called All I Want. And it made me think back to that moment when I was sitting here crying, and there's um, one part of the song, the lyrics say, Jesus, it's you, the one who understands the language of our tears. And that hits home so hard for me, especially just thinking back to that particular day. I'm just so thankful that he understands our tears and we don't have to always have elaborate language and things like that. When we come to him in prayer, we don't always have to have the right words to say we can sit there and just cry with him and he'll sit there and he, he's our comforter. He'll sit there and comfort you. So that's one thing. And I had to just plug James Fortune right there real quick because I love that album but I particularly love that song for that reason. And I just want to take this time to encourage y'all, like if y'all are ever feeling down for whatever reason, it doesn't even have to be anything major. Like you are who you are, you're human. It's okay to feel down about the things you feel down about. If it's something that triggers you, that's okay. That's that's you, that's what makes you you. And that's a part of your story. Um, but don't let the devil keep you down. Like once you start to have that feeling, even if no matter how long it takes for you to come out of that season or that space, like take that time, but don't let the devil just allow you to stay in that space for any longer than you have to. Um, you know, he he's a punk for real in all in all seriousness. Like the devil is a punk. All you have to do is cast him out and speak what he's afraid of, which is God's word. Just speak God's word over yourself and your situation and he'll flee. And that's it. That's that. So I just wanted to encourage y'all with that real quick because the devil thought he had me, but he thought wrong. All right, so fast forward. So basically what I ended up doing once I kind of started to feel a little bit better is I just had to ask God to give me back that fire and that desperation that I had for him um, before all of this crazy stuff started going on in my life. Um, so like I said, I just asked him for that fire and that desperation because I needed that back. I needed, to, I needed that to help myself get back focused on my goals and other things as well. So um basically what ended up happening is it was one night I was asleep and he woke me up real early. It was like one or two o'clock in the morning. And I woke up, um, having a lot of, still having a lot of those anxious thoughts. And so, um, basically what he ended up reminding me of is just that I have to speak his word over my situation. And that's what I ended up doing. So I'm like, okay, you know, we gotta, we gotta get back to it. We gotta get back focused. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, so what I did is I just started speaking God's word, just speaking some scriptures and quoting some scriptures that I knew um, would be beneficial. Did that, and I kid you not, like maybe a minute or two later, I started to feel that peace come back, and I felt like the devil, he fled, and I haven't really felt any resistance since then. Maybe maybe one or two days um, since then, but nothing too major like how it was during that two or three week span of me having um, depression and feeling anxious. So yeah, basically, y'all just speak speak God's word over your situation. Like praying is all fine and dandy. That's something we should do just so we're staying in communication with God and keeping our relationship going with him. But when it comes to spiritual warfare, 
you got to speak God's word. You you have to, you absolutely have to, because that's the only thing that, you know, that's that's what works. Because that's what the devil is afraid of. He's afraid of us knowing God. He's afraid of us having a relationship with him and knowing him. You have to negate Satan when he tries to spew things at you and bring up your past and things like that. Um, Because the devil, he's a liar. That's his native tongue. That's that's all he does is lie. And um, he'll even try to, you know, whisper things in your ear that are like half truth. So it may seem true or it may have even been true for you in your life at a previous point. But, you know, when you have Jesus, you are a new creation. You're a new creature. You don't have to be bound by whatever is, you know, was holding you back previously before you had Jesus or before you really started to get serious and take your walk with him seriously. Um, you're, you All you have to do is just start to walk in your newness. You're a new creation in Christ. Don't believe the things that Satan tries to whisper in your ear. He's so subtle and he's so crafty. So you have to really pay attention to that. Um, well, yeah, just walk in your newness. Don't be afraid to do that. But yeah, another thing I want to plug is something that's been keeping me going lately since I've come out of there. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, is There's a pastor here in Birmingham named Pastor Michael McClure Jr. And his church is Rock City Church. So I just want to plug him real quick because he has literally been my voice for this season. I love my pastor and all of that. Um, but for some reason, I've just kind of been really drawn to PMJ in this season. It's something about his voice and whatever it's, whatever is on him in this season. And I've been drawn to it spiritually. So I've been watching a lot of his sermons and keeping up with the things that he has going on. So right now he's in a sermon series called Insanity. And he also has a corresponding daily devotional that um, streams every morning on Facebook and YouTube at 721 a.m. So definitely just wanted to plug him because I've been plugged into that. And that's really been helping me out a whole lot. It's just thinking about things in a different way and um, just going above and beyond things that may not make sense to other people, to your friends around you, your family, but it makes perfect sense to God. And I absolutely love that concept. So that's what I've been doing is watching that sermon series and doing the daily devotionals and streaming that every morning at 721. So y'all, if y'all can, if you have a chance to in the mornings um, throughout the week, check that out, please. Because I, I promise you, it will change your life and it'll make you think, think about things a lot differently. And the two topics from the insanity, uh, the 21 days of insanity devotional that has really been so key for me and I absolutely love was the topics of courage and commitment. Those two things um, in this season are two things that I've definitely needed. Because like I said, I have um, a major decision to make for this year leading into next year. So that's definitely been something that's very key for me. But like I said, go ahead, check it out. Please, if you if you have a chance or take that time, you know, whatever you normally do in the morning, uh, spend that time with God in the morning and stream the uh, 21 Days of Insanity devotional from Roxy Church, PMJ here in Birmingham. So that's what I've been doing. And I kind of, I want to plug his album too, the new EP that he just dropped. So it's called uh, Big Freedom Session Live. So he did a live performance virtually for uh, this radio station. They were having a live performances of different gospel artists. And so he created an EP out of it and I absolutely love it. So y'all get it, when y'all get a chance, please check that out if you can. All right, so now that we got all the serious stuff out of the way, I'll just let y'all uh, in on what's been going on with me and what's next for me, actually. Uh, so coming up, I have an audition next Saturday, August 1st, and it's for the Brown Sugar Nutcracker. I'm so excited. This will be my second year doing it. I talked about that in my Get to Know Me video. Um, so y'all check that out if you get a chance as well. If you haven't seen my Get to Know Me video, I talk about Brown Sugar Nutcracker on there, um, and that's kind of how I got started back with dancing again and being really serious about it so the audition is next saturday and it's going to be super interesting because it's got it's going to be virtual because of doggone COVID 19. i want to be in person so bad because it's, it's so different when you're actually able to be around people and their energy especially with dance but unfortunately since we're still stuck in this pandemic we got to do the audition virtually but i'm excited to see how that goes especially with trying to do rehearsals and with the actual show. So this is going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. Now, unless Auntie Rona decide to leave before December, it's going to get real interesting with this brown sugar nutcracker. So, but I'm excited about that. So that's uh, what's next coming up for me. Lastly, I just want to talk about what's next for Journey to Point. So basically, I brought up the whole 
commitment and courage topic from the 21 days of insanity devotional because not only because I wanted to encourage you all but I also wanted to make it a point um, that I want to stay courageous enough to stay committed to this channel because it's my baby and I can't wait to see how it continues to flourish and I can't wait to share that special day when I actually get to earn those point shoes. I want to go through this whole process and this whole journey with you all from start to finish, from me looking raggedy as a beginner in ballet all the way to when I start to become more advanced and earn those point shoes. So I can't wait to share that moment with you all. And one last thing, especially with me talking about commitment and courage and staying committed to this channel. So you guys can expect videos from me every Wednesday. So that's going to be the flow and how the videos will come out. So y'all can expect videos every Wednesday. So y'all check me out. Don't miss a beat. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned for what's going on here at Journey to Point. All right, so as far as videos go, what y'all can expect is uh, basically what I'm going to do is a series on racism. So in light of what's been going on in the world, um, especially with uh, the police brutality and all those different things going on, I definitely wanted to touch on that topic here on this channel, uh, more specifically within the dance world, but even more specifically uh, within ballet. So I'm going to do a series on that. And once I'm done with that series, I'm going to jump into another series of me just doing some ballet, taking some ballet classes uh, virtually, of course. I wish I could be there in person, but I can't. Curse you, Auntie Rona. Jesus, go away. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to do a progressive series of me taking some ballet classes. Um, and just showing you guys my progress and see how far I've come along and some things, some areas that I still need to work on. So if you guys have suggestions, kindly leave those in the comment section below, especially when it comes to ballet technique and how I can improve and all of those things. I'll take any suggestions. Just be kind about it. Any negative comments will be deleted. Thank you. But yeah, so that's it for today, guys. Um, basically, um, I'm glad to be back. I'm glad to be feeling a lot better. Um, and since I was talking about mental health, make sure y'all go get y'all a therapist. Uh, if you don't have one, go get you one. Go get you a therapist. It ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't let the stigma of going to a therapist, talking your problems out. It doesn't make you crazy. Go and get you a therapist, even for when you're feeling good. It doesn't always have to be when things are going wrong in your life. Get you a therapist. Talk it out. Find somebody that you trust, you know, if you have to test out a few therapists just to see who you like and who you mesh with and vibe with, do that until you find the right fit for you um, for a therapist. I'm going back myself pretty soon here. Um, so, yeah, it's been a minute. I'm way long overdue for therapy and counseling and things like that. It's been since 2018 since I've been to counseling, so I'm long overdue. But y'all gonna get y'all a therapist. Um, there's also somebody else I want to plug. I've been plugging everybody today, but I'm gonna just I'm gonna just plug everybody. We can all eat. It's all good. So I want to plug. There's two ladies. Um, I actually just found out about them on Friday, this past Friday, from a professional development we did at work. So they have a advocacy group for mental health, especially with women of color, and more specifically. Um, African-American women and it's called yes I have a therapist so go check them out I'll leave their information in the description box below as well so y'all go check them out there they're, they have a really safe space for you to talk openly and they talk about storytelling and all these different things it was so wonderful to hear about the information I related so so much um, and I think other people can relate even if you're not a person of color or a woman of color I think that anybody can benefit from their advocacy group so y'all go check them out as well. all right so that's it for today so you guys take care of yourselves mentally spiritually emotionally physically all of those things take care of yourself like i said go and talk to somebody i have all the resources i mentioned in the description box below so until next time we'll be facing fears forever together somebody say live what you was believing God for before, I say believe. Because there's nothing that you lost that God can't replace. If you can find a way to just believe and dream again.